Hello and welcome to another video. This video is going to be another one in the series looking at the dungeon runs. Uh, this is just my Mesmer here that I'm using to do the run with. Um, just going through what uh, some of the equipment is. Um, it's just a generic Mesmer build, it's nothing special, it's a bit of confusion, that's pretty much it. Um, but this is a pug party, you know, nothing special. Uh, one warrior, one guardian, one elemented list and a thief. Um, so that, yeah, uh, this is the bread and butter of dungeon running Guild Wars 2. Uh, for a long, long time this was basically a very repeatable dungeon. And it was one of the most sort like easily doable dungeons, the quickest, the highest amount of rewards that people would get. Um, it's still, you know, run uh, very, very more so than it. Probably Ascalon Catacombs would give it a rival for the most run dungeon. Um, but only pre only because it takes a while to actually, you have to have an event to secure the dungeon, otherwise it becomes contested and you can't enter. But as we see here, um, I'm just talking you through it, we, we start off going through the gate, you've got two turrets and two elites. Um, and it's important, I try and pull them together, I didn't do it too well over here. Uh, but the, the elites you need to uh, really, you know, it's the turrets that send out the fire that really damages the, you. So you need to kill them first and then deal with the elites. Uh, so we've done that, now we're just heading down to the slave driver. What I do as a Mesmer, I'll pull him against the wall so it's a lot easier for everyone else to stack, as you can see there. Uh, my party members are all stacked up, and they're popping their might stacks, and we pull them right into the middle, and boom. You know, I'm doing 2,000 damage every time with confusion, and, you know, I've got another couple of uh, Phantasms doing significant damage. Uh, well, he's already down to 50%. Uh, for those of you who are new, there is a boss. Here he comes. He comes uh, along to try and help out his mate. Uh, but he, he, you don't have to touch him. You don't have to worry about him. Uh, as long as you're focusing on the slave driver and taking him down, uh, the other boss, he disappears. He, he dies automatically. Uh, and there we go. He can be a bit tricky for those that don't have high DPS. So... Uh, as a Mesmer, I'm, I'm helping out my teammates here in a supporting role uh, and being high on the condition and torment damage. So, as we're progressing through the dungeon, uh, as I said, this is a, a very easy dungeon to start off with. Uh, this video I would recommend for most people to look at, um, if you're not sure, uh, one of the other dungeons, if you may notice uh, later, just in the next bit, I don't get a chest. Uh, it's because I'd, I'd just done this about uh, five minutes earlier with a group of under-leveled uh, players, so I thought I was being a bit ambitious, uh, and unfortunately uh, it was taking so long, and eventually we had people that had no idea what to do, and so I decided to cut the video, um, and <laughs> a few people left because they're upset. All right, here we have five little um, sort of uh, dishes, and uh, you get sh shaman spawned by them, and your job is to kill them. They will respawn. Uh, the, the acolytes reinforcements, the flame acolytes. Uh, you have to kill those, they've got the cross swords above the heads for that very reason. Uh, and then when you kill the initial fir first five, it, you have to retreat. You can kill them, but I think the, the flame legion respawn. The, the, everyone just hides, you know, you run away. <laughs> The, the flame damage is significant. Even uh, experienced dun you know, dungeon runners can get caught out by these guys. And then they've got the elites here. They, they are hitting for some heavy damage on me here. I mean, ooh, that is a bit, you know, for a ranger, he's hitting me hard. Um, but yeah, what we're doing, we were just waiting for the acolytes to respawn. Uh, you get two waves that you, know, you, need, you need to kill. So just some of them you can see have popped up. So we're going to go down and kill some. As a Mesmer, I have to say, against these um, <laughs> particular characters, I'm not very effective. I, I act on confusion, and these guys don't actually pop any skills. So uh, I'm not having much impact. Uh, I'm just trying to help my other guys out, create clones, create some sort of uh, alternate uh, targets for these enemies. Um, and then what we're going to do, uh, This is you used to be able to hide down the side. They've blocked that off now. So the, the way we hide, we're going to hide up here. It, it's far away enough that they tend to, as you can see, they're chasing me, um, but they'll uh, back off uh, because, you know, they, they've run too far. And then, so we've, we've killed ten uh, Acolytes, we've got two more to kill out of the next wave. You can kill this, another wave of five, but you only need to kill two. Um, and then the Mesmer is very useful in this situation after this, but I'm going to come to that. So here we go, the Acolytes are popping up, we're going to go and kill them. Don't worry about raising anyone um, at this point, it, once you've killed the last remaining acolytes, as you see in the top right, the bar going down. 
Um, we get a waypoint. So th this is where a chest normally spawns. Uh, the waypoint, uh, the dead can now uh, quickly waypoint. As we'll see. They'll just pop up. There we go. Now, as a Mesma, this is where I come into my own. Uh, if you didn't have a Mesma, you have to run this uh, in your dungeon party. And you have to dodge uh, the fireballs. Now, if you notice my skills, I actually have portal and blink. And that is extremely important. It will save you time. If you don't have very skilled players, uh, a Mesma are on your side for this dungeon party is you know, very, very useful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop portal and then I'm going to run and blink across. Here we go. And blink, and there we go. I uh, judge roll just to be safe, and drop the portal. The other guys come through with the uh, the brazier you know, to light the braziers, and uh, there we go. We're through. So nice and easy. Uh, the only downside for me, I've got a bit of a cooldown, so my skills are going to be a little bit uh, ineffective for the next uh, minute or so. Uh, the idea here now, we have four. This is a very important. New people are get a bit confused by this. There are four braziers and you have to stand in each one to open the gate. As you can see in the top right, the gate controller on the mini-map, we've got one player that's taking out the gate controller and until we have to remain standing under these braziers so that the, the uh, there's a little force field that surrounds the thing that the guy has to destroy um, and if we move out of that, the force field comes up and the guy can't actually destroy the gate uh, mechanism. So, um, the, the, as I said, there's an elite there that's burning him to hell, so it, <laughs> it's a very strong uh, character, that elite uh, for, uh, Godstorm, or Firebringer, whatever his name is. Um, anyway, uh, I'm getting hit here. Right, we're on to the final boss. This is the Searing Effigy. Uh, you do need high DPS for this. He does uh, regain health through these crystals, however... If you do get downed, you can resurrect by destroying and tagging one of these ta one of these uh, stones. So we're going to pop uh, get the sort of uh, speed the quickness going. Uh, I'm going to pop some clones and phantasms. As you can see, his health's going down pretty quickly. Um, as I said, we're not you know we've got a thief, we've got a warrior, we've got a guardian. We're not completely maxed out pro super pro party. You know it used to be a case where you'd have four uh, warriors and a mesma. And that would be the party comp, you know, that that would be it. Uh, and any other sort of variation of the party, people weren't accepting, you know. Rangers especially, they were dire. I mean, they're not the fantastic in a dungeon run. Um, Ellie's are pretty good for damage. You can see you've got the fiery great sword out. Um, the warriors pop the banners, so he's getting extra precision for the banner of discipline. Uh, and, you know, the thief can hit uh, particular damage, but in long sustained spells, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm you know I'm staying at range. I'm hitting the confusion. He's really you know you can see some of the numbers I'm getting from these massive stacks of confusion. Uh, normally you don't hit for that much, but you know he's got all these conditions on. So one of my phantasms of my staff skill three is really doing significant damage. Um, my pistols are skill number four is doing some damage. You can see this. I'm not you know I'm not activating skills. It's all these condies that I'm having. This is my build. I'm a bit of a condi mesmer, so. I don't actually have to worry, you know, I set out my phantasms, my clones, I'll pop, you know, shatter skills to get them to go in, and bam, we're done. So, uh, I hope this has been a nice speed run for you, this gives you some idea of what to stand, what to do, uh, and I'll see you on the next video.